Hi there! It feels really good to be back here again and, and speaking to all of you again. I miss you guys whenever I'm away. Um, I was traveling in India and I was spending some quality time with my mom and the internet is not great there. It was wonderful spending time with my mom, but it's just a shame that the internet is not great at her place, so I wasn't able to do any Facebook Lives. And I want to say thank you to the outpouring of love I received because I was sharing photos of me and my mom and um, I had so many beautiful responses to my newsletter and also on Facebook, a lot of beautiful comments from people. And many of you who live in India, who are in India, also wrote to me and so many of you wrote to me that it really touched me that you wanted to see me while I was there. And I'm so sorry I wasn't able to meet any of you because I really just wanted to spend time with my mom because I was there for such a short time. It's such a long way to go for me from here that it actually takes me a couple of days to get there and a couple of days to get over the jet lag. So it may seem that I'm gone for a while, but really I only have a very short time with my mom. And because she's now, um, okay, she, she doesn't realize it because her memory's not great, but she is 92 now. She turned 92 this month. Um, and uh, so, you know, I, I know that I have to come to terms with the fact that she will be leaving the planet at some point. So I just like to spend every minute I can with her when I'm there. Um, so um, I've been rambling on. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Anita Murjani and I love doing these videos as often as I can. And um, I, I just also wanted to share that I received this beautiful present. I received it some quite a few weeks ago and I know it just looks like a plain white mug. But one beautiful listener who heard me say that I always like to have my tea warm, um, she sent me this mug, which is a mug that stays warm or keeps your drink warm and is controlled by your app, by an app on your phone. I thought it was ingenuous and it was such a thoughtful gift. So I wanted to say thank you to the person who sent it to me. I am so grateful. Um, it's beautiful. I use it all the time and it's, yeah, it, it's, it's so thoughtful and that really touched me. So today, um, I was trying to figure out what did I want to talk about because it's been a few weeks and sometimes I feel like I have talked about so many topics and um, I get my inspiration from reading your comments and your questions and I go back and read them and and so um, I went back and read a lot of the questions that people have submitted and uh, and oh, Beverly uh, Bogoski says, such love you have for your mother. Yeah, I do actually. Thank you. Um, so as I went back and read so many of your questions, um, I noticed that there was a common theme. And one of the, there was a couple of common themes. And so even though the questions were very, very diverse, and they seemed to be completely different questions, the common theme was that... Um, I noticed that most of the questions I can sense are coming from empaths. They're coming from people who are extremely sensitive and who are people who feel a deep sense of empathy for the world and the people around them. That's one common thread. And the second common thread is that, the, that all of the questions, um, I feel that the issue caused that has been caused, which is what causes the person to write the question, the issue behind it is that people still don't know how to love themselves or they don't love themselves enough. And it's especially empaths who don't know how to love themselves or who don't love themselves enough because they are afraid that if they love themselves too much, it makes them selfish or egotistical. And so they stop short of loving themselves. And so even though the questions seem to be diverse and uh, were about different things, about relationships, about abuse, about religion, about prayer, about heaven and hell, about uh, punishment, afterlife, and fears, and they were all about different things. And I was skimming through all these questions and I noticed, wow, the one common theme is that all these people do not know how to love themselves. 
And when I talk about loving yourself, I don't mean just your physical body. I mean your whole self. And if you get a chance, I would love for you to revisit one of my older videos, which is called um, The Law of Attraction and the Tip of the Iceberg. And so it is to do with loving your whole self because who you are, your physical self, is just the tip of the iceberg. The part of you that is non-physical is far, far greater, much greater. It's, so I call it, it an iceberg because you, your physical body, is maybe only about 20% of who you really are. And when you look at an iceberg, all you're really seeing is 20% of the iceberg, even though it appears that you're looking at a whole iceberg. But actually, the majority of the iceberg is below the water, the surface, the water surface. And so you can't see it. But the bigger part of the iceberg is actually underneath. It's the same with us. The bigger part of us is non-physical. It's important for you to re realize this because... When you love the whole you, it's not just about loving the physical body, but it's about loving the whole you enough to realize that your essence, your soul, your consciousness has a purpose. It has a purpose. It has a reason for being. And it has, it has come into this life with a longing and a yearning. And that is what you are supposed to learn about or get to know and so the more that you love your whole you, your essence, your soul, the more you get to know what is its life's longing, what is your purpose. So I didn't know this either. So I don't blame you for not knowing, knowing this because I discovered it during my near-death experience. It was only when I died did I realize that the part of me that was not physical was far more powerful than the physical part of me. And the part of me that was non-physical was the part that if I knew about it and knew to tap into it, um, my life would be far better and less fearful and more powerfully lived. So um, the only difference between being able to tap into it or not is to be aware that it's there. That's it. We all have this. We are all non-physical beings um, with only a little bit, the tip of the iceberg being this physical body. And the only difference between those who are able to tap into it or not, uh, that uh, is being aware of it. That's it. So if you start to become aware that a greater part of you is non-physical, that's when you can start to listen to and trust your inner voice. To me, that is true self-love. And I'm going to tell you some of the more um, mundane questions. When I say mundane, I mean more physically, um, physically rooted questions that I've been receiving, which if you knew you were more than the physical, those questions would be, would be resolved. So what's really important, though, is that when you are aware that you're more than physical, when I say love yourself, love yourself like your life depends on it, I'm not saying be vain and love your physical body. I am saying love your whole self, love your soul, love your essence, love your consciousness, get to know it, go on a journey, sit quietly, discover who you are. And here's the big one. Here's how to really get, you, get to know your soul. Stop judging yourself. Judgment is what prevents you from discovering who you are. Because every time you judge yourself and you say, oh my God, that part of me is so negative, you stop, you stop going deeper. You stop allowing yourself to reveal yourself any further. So the number one thing to do in getting to know yourself is to stop judging yourself. The number two thing, so when you stop, so, so first stop judging yourself, the number two thing is to just observe yourself. So it's almost like stepping out of yourself and then just observe with no judgment and kind of say, huh, that was a negative thought I had. Oh, I didn't handle that very well. I wonder why. I wonder what's going on in there. Remember, no judgment. You're not saying that 
it's the right thing to do. You might use that as a lesson to handle things differently next time, but don't beat yourself up about it. Because if you beat yourself up about it, you won't go there again to get to the bottom of why you are that way or why you react that way. But when you have no judgment towards yourself, you'll allow yourself to unravel who you are. And as you unravel, that's when you get to the real nuggets. That's when the alchemy begins. Because when you feel safe with yourself to unravel and get to the bottom of who you are with no judgment, that's when you find the true gold, the real treasure of, of who you really are. So, so don't forget, so the number one thing is um, to be aware. The number two thing is no judgment. And the number three thing is to allow yourself to go into yourself and to just unravel and to, you can keep questioning yourself. So now what, was some of the, what are some of the questions that I get, which I say that the answer to everything is really knowing who you tru truly are and loving yourself with no judgment. One of the questions that people keep asking me is that um, they're in a relationship which, where they're not happy or they feel it's abusive and they try to love that person because I keep talking about um, unconditional love. <clears throat> so they keep trying to love the person unconditionally because they believe that the person must need it more because they're so hurtful and abusive. So although I agree that hurtful and abusive people also need love, when I say that love is the answer to everything and you need to love more in such situations, you need to start by loving yourself more. That's where it really starts. It's not about loving the other person so that they will change. <clears throat> it, <clears throat> excuse me. You can't be in a relationship with the intention of changing the other person. It's about loving yourself more so that you stop accepting that kind of abuse because you don't deserve it. Your soul, your essence is a piece of God just like that person's is. Your soul and your essence deserves to be treated with love and respect. You need to teach other people how to love you by first loving yourself at that level to know that you're not going to accept that. And that's the way we do it is by first loving ourselves, not by loving that person unconditionally at the point where, where they're abusing you, not by loving them in a way that allows them to abuse you. And then when they're abusing you, you keep loving them more in the hope that they'll change. That doesn't work. It's about loving yourself so much and knowing that this is not who you came here to be. You didn't come here to be a doormat. You didn't come here to be abused. And loving yourself so much that you know you're destined for something greater and better, that you're willing to walk out. That's how much you need to love yourself. You need to be willing to walk out. Because when you're willing to walk out and you do walk out, one of two things happens. Either you create a space for someone else to come into your life who loves you and cherishes you and adores you in the way you deserve. Because when you walk out, that is an act of love for yourself. And when you are at a certain frequency of love, other people have to meet you at that frequency. But the second thing that can happen, um, so the, one of, the second of the two possibilities, is that the person you walked out from will have to meet you at your pre frequency if they want to hold on to you. They will have no choice. So their choice, that person's choice, is either to stay at that frequency of love where they're at, in which case they will lose you. And if they are really, and if it means more to them to stay at that level where they are unable to match your level of love, then it's you're better off without them and you're better off with them staying at that level until they're ready to actually receive love in a greater way. Because there are people in this world who do not know how to receive pure, deep love. They don't know how to do it. And I'm not saying that it's their fault. 
I'm not saying they deserve to be treated badly, but remember, they're the ones that are abusing you, not you abusing them. Sometimes the best act of, of love can be to walk away from such a situation because that may be what they need to really look into themselves. On the other hand, if they are someone that's not ready to look into themselves, they might be on a completely different frequency where they will just go and hook up with someone else who's willing to take their abuse, in which case you really are better off without them. So remember, when it comes to relationships, the best thing you can do for yourself and your partner is to love yourself like your life depends on it. Love yourself, love your whole self, your consciousness and who you truly are and have other people meet you at your level. Because remember, when they meet you at your level, that love expands exponentially because that is the level at which you will love them and that's the level at which they will love you. So that's really, really important. Um, another question that people kept asking and oh, before I go into that, Heather Elizabeth says, this message was meant for me today. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. You're so welcome. Um, and remember, it is always your choice at what level you want to operate love at. And when you are totally in that space where you really love yourself, you don't allow yourself to be a doormat. You don't allow yourself to be mistreated. And certain triggers that people use, like when somebody is afraid to have you walk away, um, they will use certain triggers. They might say things like, I'm so disappointed in you that, that you want to leave this relationship. Or they'll say things like, um, oh, you're not as unconditionally loving as you claim to be. So just remember, these are triggers that people use to keep you stuck in doormathood. So don't fall for those. Because remember, you didn't, you aren't the abusive one in the relationship. You are receiving the abuse. You're not out to make people feel small. So when you are the one being made to feel small or being reduced, or when you are the one who's being suppressed or oppressed and not being allowed to follow your purpose, the way that people keep you there is by saying things I'm like, I'm disappointed in you, or you're not as unconditionally loving as you claim to be. And, and that, is, and as long as people say that, and as long as it works on you, they have a hold on you. And so once you recognize these triggers, don't let them have a hold on you at all. You, so you need to love yourself enough to know that I don't hurt people. I am at my best when I'm following my purpose. I'm at my best when I love myself and operate love on a higher level where I can give love to someone who knows how to receive it. And you can choose to only give love and interact in a space of love with people who can meet you at that level. That is absolutely your choice. Remember that. So getting back to a second question that I get from people is um, very similar, but comes in many different forms, is people asking me about religion. People ask me about my beliefs about, um, about whether there is punishment on the other side, whether there's hell, whether there's negative karma, whether we're, you know, people who do wrong, sinners and all, whether we're going to be punished and, and in different ways, you know, in Hindu religion, it's karma. In Buddhism, it's karma. In Christianity, it's hell. Do sinners get punished and so on. So all in different ways. So what I like to say, so I have written about this extensively in both my books in, in Dying to Be Me and What If This Is Heaven. If you haven't read them, I would love for you to pick them up and read them. In the US currently, Dying to Be Me, I think is only five dollars something so this is a good chance I don't know why Amazon has dropped its price but I'm glad it has um, so this is a good chance to read it so um, I speak about my beliefs about religion and I don't believe in the fear-based reasons for doing good I really don't um, so I tell people do not worry about what happens in the afterlife I know many people like to think that um, sinners and all will get punished in the afterlife. But the thing is, you don't know their path. Maybe they had a painful path and in the afterlife what happens is 
we get into this state of clarity where we judge ourselves. There is no outside element. There is no frying in hell for the all of eternity. It's not all of that. We kind of go, oh my gosh, I could have handled this better. Oh my gosh, all that pain I went through, it made me have a skewed view of life. And so I lashed out at these people. I made these mistakes. I fell into the wrong company, whatever it is, we can see it. We enter this, what I call this God's eye view, where we ourselves have this God's eye view. Um, and we're then able to see what we've done wrong and what, how we could have done it differently. But I truly believe that when we actually truly love ourselves, our whole selves, and we know our purpose here because we're in touch with our whole selves. And remember, your purpose will, will shift shape and change as you develop through life. It's not like it's just one purpose and you know it and you're done. No, it's a growth. It's a continuous growth and there are ups and downs. But when you're in touch with your whole self, you stop worrying about the afterlife and you don't, um, you, even though you, you do inadvertently maybe hurt other people by being yourself, you are far less likely to commit heinous crimes and things like that or, or to murder or kill people because you are aware that all of us are connected and you have no right to take someone's life. So I truly believe the answer to people actually being more empathic and being kinder to each other is not about causing us to fear retribution in the afterlife, but it's about us learning to love in this life. That is a much better reason to be kind to other people and to stop creating havoc or to stop killing people and to stop hurting people. It's really about learning about who we are and how we're connected to everyone. That is far more important. And the other thing I want to say about religion is that um, as long as religion is serving you and making you feel loved and making you feel love and joyful and happy, then great, follow it. If your religion or your beliefs or your teachings or your uh, whatever it is, temple or church or congregation or whatever, is making you feel fear, then run, run. Don't walk, walk away from it, run away from it. Because fear is detrimental to you. It's detrimental to the people around you. Because remember, we entrain the people around us. If you are living in fear, fear of retribution, fear of religion, fear of the afterlife, that's what you're bringing with you wherever you go. That's what you're bringing to your kids, to your family. So do not, it is not truth. If it's steeped in fear, it is not based on truth. To me, religion is supposed to be a celebration. If you go to a temple or a church or a mosque or whatever it is where people are celebrating life, where people are happy, then that's great. Then they're doing what they're meant to do. If you're, if you're going there and getting comfort, if you're getting community, then that's great. But if you're going there and feeling fear, then I would leave. That's not for you. That's not good for you and it's not good for the planet. Um, I know that there, there are people who believe that Fear is something that's necessary for us because um, animals feel fear naturally and so humans are supposed to feel fear naturally. I absolutely believe that certain fears are good for us. When it is a fear of physical danger, like to get you out of harm's way, then yes, it is absolutely necessary and natural when, you're, when your psyche, your body, whatever feels fear, it is absolutely natural. You have to get out of the way of oncoming cars. You feel fear to cross the road when there's traffic or fear of an animal attacking you. So when it is a physical bodily harm, danger, fear, if you feel fearful in the presence of someone who just has an energy that you just feel that they may attack you, that's very, very valid. That is the fear that animals have. That is exactly the fear that animals have. They fear for their life. They fear that they are in danger. But here's the fear that animals don't have, but humans unnecessarily have. Humans have a fear of religion. Animals don't have that fear. Humans have a fear of death. Animals don't have that fear. Humans have a fear of illness. 
Even when they're fully well, they live from a place of a fear of illness. Animals don't have that fear. These are all unnatural fears. Humans have a fear of the afterlife. They have a fear of living life fully. They have a fear of failing. Um, all these are not, not valid fears. They're not real fears. Animals don't have those fears. Those are purely human construct, which we have developed from conditioning, human conditioning whether it's through our education system, whether it's through our culture, our family, those are all human constructual fears. Those are all the fears that you can safely drop without fear because those fears don't keep you safe. Love keeps you safe. So thanks for listening and I'm going to jump into the questions, but I also want to mention that I would love for you to check out my YouTube channel and subscribe or subscribe to my newsletter. And also, I would love to see you at some of my events. Um, I'm really excited that I have the cruise. It's getting closer and closer. It's coming up in June. And when we are at our live events, we actually do some really cool things. We entrain everybody's energy to operate on a higher level. Imagine 100 people in a room or 150 people in a room or 50 people, depending how many are in that retreat, all entrained at this level of love, all of us feeding off each other and expanding exponentially. And what happens at these retreats? People write to me and they say, so what can I get from attending one of your retreats? Here's what happens. You lose your fear of death. You lose your fear of illness. You become aware of that whole 80 percent of you that is um, that is non-physical you become aware of your purpose you learn how to follow your purpose you become aware of um, why your body has certain physical challenges and we do sometimes in fact pretty often we see healing taking place um, and in fact it's so many different things we go on deep experiential journeys together so many things take place in these retreats that it's sometimes hard to put into words. So I would love to see you at some of my upcoming retreats. Um, I'm going to be traveling again. Unfortunately, I'm going to be traveling again at the end of this week. So there won't be a Facebook Live next week um, because I will be at Omega. Um, I'll be speaking at um, Omega Center doing a five-day retreat there. And I will also speak, be speaking in Virginia Beach at ARE. And next month, I'll be doing the cruise, which I've been pretty excited about. And I would love to read some of your comments. And here's one from Tia Paynews, who says, Hi, Anita from Sydney, Australia. Hi, Tia. Wow, thanks for tuning in at this time. I would have thought it's like really, really, really early in the morning. I love hearing from people from all over the world. That's just so cool that so many of you write to me from all these different countries. Linda Prince, hi Anita and Danny from England. Wow, thank you. If I had emojis right now, I would be flashing them all up because you're all so cute and you're all so cool. And um, I should have asked you this earlier. If you have any questions, I should have asked you earlier to post them so that I could have skimmed through and I could have answered a few questions. Here's one, um, Linda L. Baca Goodwilly. Anita, I totally respect you and understand what you're saying. However, what do parents do that love our children and it's our children that have chosen to treat us badly and decide to terminate our relationship completely? Wow, that is, I understand that can be really heartbreaking. Let's flash this up on the screen so people can see the question and know what I'm talking about. Now, I know a lot of people for whom this has happened to. It's not uncommon. And the only thing you can do, and I'm going to say this, um, you really need to love yourself more. The temptation is to bend over backwards to try and win the child over. Um, I'm not saying not to win the child over. Absolutely do try and win the child over. That's your instinct. You're going to try and win the child over. But don't do it in a way that makes you into a doormat. Don't do it in a way that allows your child to abuse you more. That's what I'm trying to say. You have to, you have to absolutely 
um, raise your own love frequency for want of a better way of putting it. I know that may sound corny, but that really is what you have to do. You really have to love yourself more and continue to love the child and be there for when the child comes back. And it may take some time, but I know of cases where eventually the person's son or daughter has come back. And I have heard from people where it has taken anywhere from two years to six years. I have a friend who said her child has not spoken to her for six years and it's really broken her heart. But now in recent months, the child has started to come back and communicate. Now here's a second thing I would like you to do if your child has, or somebody you love, maybe not even a child, but someone you love has decided to ostracize you or um, um, to, to marginalize you. What I would suggest you do is to visualize. Visualize yourself sending them love and visualize yourself having a conversation with them that you would love to have and have them respond to you in that visualization in the way that you wish they would respond to you. Some level of them is actually going to feel that. And remember, at no time should you become the doormat or lower yourself or lower your own love frequency for yourself. Don't blame yourself. Don't beat yourself up about it. Don't judge yourself. Stop guessing, stop second guessing yourself and saying things like, oh, I should have done it this way. Absolutely not. That is the wrong energy to send out. That is the doormat energy where you're giving them more of an opportunity to treat you like a doormat. Always love yourself. Know that you have done your best. Know that you are a loving soul. Give yourself a big hug. Try the visualizations and just um, know that when they come back, you will still love them. And even though you will be relieved and happy, you're not going to lower your own love frequency. I hope that helps. Roz Brooks, hey Roz. Love from Las Vegas, good to see you. Broadcasting from your electrifying wall here in the States. So happy you're back from your trip. Thanks, Roz. I always miss you guys so much when I go away. Even though we have an online relationship, it still feels different when I'm home because we're on the same time zone when I'm home. So it always feels really good. Um, so I am, even though when I'm traveling over the next couple of weeks, hopefully I, I will be able to um, send you short snippets of video. Hopefully I'll be in places where I have good bandwidth. And I have something exciting to say next week. I'm actually going to meet up with Eben Alexander, my, my fellow colleague, author, and near-death experiencer. So we're going to, so Eben and his partner, Karen, and Danny and myself, the four of us, are actually going to spend a few days together after I finish at ARE, which is the Edgar Casey Institute. I have a few days off before speaking at Omega. So Eben and I are going to spend a few days together. So I will, I will actually shoot some video and take some photos of us and post it on Facebook. For those of you who don't know who Eben Alexander is, he wrote the book Proof of Heaven, which was a number one New York Times bestselling book. Great book. If you haven't read it, I suggest you read it. And, um, Margie Murray will take this one last question. Um, if you send love to someone who has a toxic personality, do they feel it? Absolutely they do. But what I would suggest to you, continue to send love to them from a distance, but do not feel obligated to physically spend time with them. <clears throat> because if the person is toxic for you, it means they're not a match for you. They will have triggers for you to keep you stuck in a toxic relationship. So try and avoid spending physical time with them, but by all means, you can visualize and send them energy and love um, energetically and visually. And you will be able to feel if they've come out of, um, if they have grown, if they are ready to be in some kind of relationship with you. But remember the key here is never lower your own love frequency for someone else. People will try. They might say you're selfish or you've changed. You're not the same as you were before. They, or they might even say things like they're disappointed in you and things like that. People will try to get you to 
lower your love frequency, but don't do it. And remember, you're not the one that attacked them or made them feel small or made them um, or, or suppress them or oppress them. They just so you can. So if you are at all in doubt about whether they're right or not, like if you start to doubt yourself and say, oh, maybe I am being selfish. Oh, maybe I should give in more. Here's the thing. Ask yourself this. Am I oppressing them or are they oppressing me? Am I judging them or are they judging me all the time? Are, am I the one making them feel small or are they making me feel small? Chances are it's them doing it to you and I'll tell you why the chances are really high it's not you because the fact that you're doubting it, the fact that you're questioning it, the fact that you're thinking it might be you, that means chances are it's not you because usually people who say those things they're not actually, they, they don't have the self-awareness to question themselves. And you don't want to be stuck in a relationship. As an empath, you don't want to be stuck in a relationship with someone who has little or no empathy for you and who has little or no self-awareness. You, you, you want them to be entrained to your level, not you down to their level. So on that note, I'm going to leave you all to have a wonderful week. And remember, your questions keep me inspired for more videos. So don't stop. Don't stop asking me questions. Even if you missed an, or you're posting after the Facebook Live, don't worry. I will skim through them. Um, I love it when you go on to my YouTube. Go on to my YouTube and post questions there as well. So I do read them or write in through my website. It's contact-us at anitamurjani.com. I do read through the questions. My team reads through the questions. Roz makes a list of questions for me, and we use the best ones for me to address to create these Facebook Lives. Thank you so much, all of you, for tuning in. I love you. I've missed you, and I wish you were all here so I could give you all a hug, but I'm going to give you all a big virtual hug. And Boo from behind the scenes, he says hi as well. Go on, your voice. Say, say hi, say bye. <laughs> say hi, say bye. <laughs> That's Boo. Yeah, I think, that's, that's me. I think he should have his own show. What do you say? <laughs> well, you know, it's too late. We're wrapping up the show now. It's uh, too late for uh, comments and for it's too late for people to say anything. <laughs> no, we can go back and read them later. I bet you people agree with me. Oh, me. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, everybody. And I will see you all soon, real soon. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in to my video. And if you really enjoyed it, I would love for you to subscribe. And the subscribe button is here. And also, I would love for you to watch my suggested video, which is over here. And if you love my content, please feel free to share it to people who you think that would benefit from it. Thank you.